Okay, good. Please repeat. O son of Pritha. So who is that? Very good. Point. Those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service. Because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. So this, there's a lot in this verse. Prabhupada, there's this one letter which I found some years ago and it has helped me so much in my preaching. Prabhupada says you can just speak from the different synonyms. Just by speaking on the synonyms, so much is there. So the first word, please repeat, Maha Atmana, the great souls. So as we said earlier, we the devotees are the great souls. And of course, she told us who is Partha, it is Arjuna. Arjuna has several names, Bibatsu, Dananjai. You find these names in the Mahabharat, different names. Savyasachi, that's in Bhagavad Gita. He has these different names because of his wonderful qualities. So, Daivin Prakritin. So that's the divine nature. So we learn from chapter 7. There are two classifications of energy of Krishna. <coughs> There's the <coughs> inferior material energy and the superior spiritual energy. Krishna makes that distinction for us in chapter 7. The material energy from the angle of vision of Bhagavad Gita, eight separated material energies, earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, intelligence, false ego. False ego means I think of myself something other than Krishna's eternal servant. If I think of myself as Krishna's eternal servant, that is real ego. That is true ego. If I think of myself something else, that is false. It's not what I am. So, the material energy, eight separated energies. But then in the next verse, besides this, there is a superior energy. So that superior energy is the spiritual energy. Diving Prakriti, the divine nature. Ultimately, this divine nature, Balaram, here's your chance to shine. Ultimately, who personifies the divine energy? Balaram. Srimati Radharani. Chit Shakti. That Chit Shakti or Antaranga Shakti has three. It has Akhladani, Samvit, Sandhani. This we will find in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. This divine nature has eternal existence. The material energy, temporary existence. It exists, but it exists temporarily. <coughs> like my body. My body will exist for some time, but I know, especially now, I'm 68, the notice is there. Hello, you only have a few more days, Prabhu. I look in the mirror, uh, uh, because the notice is there. Just like sometimes you get a notice in the mail. Dear sir, 
Get out. You're being evicted. What? You're late six months in your rent. You must get out. So all of us, we're getting the eviction notice. This body. Yeah, you're young. You're thinking, what's he talking about? But as you get older, you start getting the messages that you're going to have to say bye-bye. Right? You cannot live in Trump Tower forever. Yes. Unless he can come back and become cockroach in Trump Tower. Yes. That is possible. So, we are getting this notice because this material body is asat, achit, nirananda. It's not eternal. It's not knowledgeable and it's not blissful having material body. We all go through that. We go through so many aches and pains with this body. One day you wake up, I feel good today. I'm going to get a lot of things done. Then the next day, oh, my back, my tooth, my head, my eyes. My, my, my wife right now is going through some knee problems. The knees. Because that's what's happening with this inferior material energy. But the divine nature is eternal existence and fully cognizant. And then especially Radharani represents Khladini, the pleasure potency. In the material realm, the pleasure potency is limited and temporary. And generally, this material pleasure is a mixture of pain and pleasure. You take any material happiness, it's not pure. There's always some kind of uh, pain involved in any kind of material, so-called material happiness. It's a mixture. But this spiritual energy, especially Khladini, the pleasure is ever increasing. In the material world, it's like this, up and down. Up, right. And I'm sure you all have your stock investments, right? So, I'm sure you look at it, right? Checking what happened to the... Boo! Right? Or you have your 401ks. Watch your 401ks. You know, there's a rumor out there. 2008 revisited. That I'm just saying what I... Somehow predicting that this crash is going to be the crash of all crashes. Anyway, Chan Hare Krishna. Everybody... Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So we see that <coughs> riding high, then low, up, down, up, down. Some people accept that that's just life, Prabhu. Yes, that is material life, up and down. But Hladini, the bliss, pleasure potency, is ever increasing and you you can tap into that simply by engaging in devotional service as he says bhajanti Prabhupada here translate bhajanti not as worship worship is only one aspect of service some people think oh bhaj means to worship yes but that's only one of nine definitions of this word, budge. You're doing budge right now. You're hearing about Krishna. That is also budja. Budja hure mana srinanda nandana abhaya charanada vindare. So there are nine, he says at the end of the song. Sravana Kirtana Smarana 
ಚಂದನ ಪಾದ ಸೇವನ ದಾಸ್ಯರೆ ಪೂಜನ ಸಖಿ ಜನಾತ್ಮ ನಿವೇದನ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಮೀನಿಯಲ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ನೈನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಭಜ ಓರ್ ಭಜಂಟಿ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ now daivam prakriti asrita that's taking shelter of in the bhagavad gita krishna's final commandment sarva dharman prityajya mam ekam sharanam vraja so this word sharanam like oh gujaratis sri krishna sharanam mama correct that's the mantra so that is perfect So this word sharanam you can translate as surrender but I like a better word taking shelter Same thing when you surrender you take shelter like when husband and wife come together they take shelter of each other The man is supposed to give protection to the wife and the wife gives protection to the husband it works both ways yes i am very very fortunate very very fortunate that i have such a wife who protects me from maya she won't let me fall into maya if my wife sees me falling into maya she'll sit on my chest hey what are you doing snap out of it you representing shila prabhupad what are you doing that's a good wife She won't let me fall into Maya. Brahmacharya's you just close your ears because I have to speak to everybody. You take shelter of devotional service. You also want to remain brahmachari forever? All right. Jai. So take shelter of Balaram. Because Balaram has taken shelter of his spiritual master. Yes? Very good. So daivin prakriti astrita we take shelter of this divine nature shimati radharani through the nine items of devotional service that's how you take shelter that's how you do it so just make sure you're always hearing chanting remembering praying worshiping serving like that if you're always engaged in service you'll be under protection you'll be under shelter just like right now what's happening in south carolina north carolina the flood hurricane is coming you all seen the reports on tv all day right so they're all looking for some place for shelter there's nothing else you can do you have to leave your home you have to leave everything that that's not easy you experienced that you were telling me your story you had to leave tens what is it tanzania you had to leave it and i have friends back in the 70s they had to leave uganda because they had one asura kicked everybody out he was asura right yes i had many such friends they told me pack they just had to leave everything behind So the same thing. So you need some place to take shelter. I was in the same way at the age of 23. I decided I was going to take shelter of Shila Prabhupada and his movement. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I knew this is where I wanted to take shelter. And here I am today. Who knew one day I would be here? and i never thought i would be here in your home when you surrender to krishna it is a transcendental journey you don't know where you're going to wind up i've traveled all over the world all because of that one decision to take shelter of prabhupad and his movement i've had so many wonderful 
exciting adventures. I've traveled all over the United States as a brahmachari. I went to South Africa. Twice I went. I went to Australia. I went to, I go, South America every year. All of it because I made that decision to surrender to Krishna. As I've said, I would make that decision a hundred times over again. No regrets. It has been an exciting adventure. And if I have a few more years, who knows? I want to, I, I'm praying one day, I want to go to Dubai. Because I hear there's lots of Indians in Dubai. I've heard. So you bless me that I can go safely. I don't want anything to happen. No, there are some places my wife won't let me go. So I, I think she'll let me anyway. Depends. Huh? Mexico. I used to go. But then she heard. She goes, mm -mm, no more Mexico. Because I'm her investment. So she's very protective of her investment. All right. So we take shelter of the divine nature by devotional service. Now it says here, Ananya Manasa, without deviation of the mind. This is something Krishna repeats throughout Bhagavad Gita. In chapter, uh, chapter 12, he says, first, right off the bat, so always think of me. Finish. But then Krishna says, if you can't do that, then do sadhana bhakti so that you will eventually come to that platform. So the, the goal is to be Harinama Eva Kevalam Kirtaniya Sada Always Always fixed on Krishna Now The translation Gyatva Bhutadam Abhyayam The devotees Why do they take shelter of the spiritual energy? Why do they want to constantly be, do devotional service? Because They know that Krishna is Adim, the origin. He is, what does Lord Brahma say? Anadir Adi. He has no origin other than himself. I come from my parents who come from their parents who come back, 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 back. It all started with Lord Brahma. But Lord Brahma has an origin. Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. But Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu comes from Mahavishnu, who comes from Narayan, who comes from Mahasankarshan, who comes from Balaram, who comes from Krishna, who comes from Krishna. The buck stops with Krishna. Therefore, Adam, he is the origin. That verse from Lord Brahma's Brahma Sanghita is so important. Anadi Adya. He has no origin other than himself. That's why we have full confidence in Krishna. And then this word, avyayam, inexhaustible. As Prabhupada used to point out, in other religions, they have the conception of God, but he's an old man with a beard because they don't know any better. Or sometimes, when I was a new brahmachari, one religious group, whenever we would come out, then they would come out. And they would pass out their little pamphlets. So I took, and there they have a picture of God sitting on a throne, but no face. I used to say, what? This not, they, it has hair and everything, but the face is blank. I said, what is that? I'm not going to worship some ghost. Whereas you, in Prabhupada's books, the form of Krishna is very clear. So, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, how old was Krishna? Anybody know? How old? 125. Very good, Balaram. You have read the books. 
125, but what did he look like? 16, 20 years old. Pretty good. Pretty good. That means Krishna is abhyam, inexhaustible. He does not grow old. In the Krishna book towards the end, Prabhupada lists different opulences and perfections of Krishna. So one of them is he does not grow old. He's eternally youthful. Now, it says here, they are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as God, original and exhaustible. This is repeated. The very first verse I memorized in the Bhagavad Gita when I was a brahmachari, I would go out every day on the New York City subways, passing out Prabhupada's books, collecting donations. So I had a friend, an older god brother, Pushkar Das. You know Pushkar? So you know, right? Everybody's smiling, Pushkar. Everybody knows. Very wonderful character with a great personality. And he was always joking. So every day I would see Pushkar in the temple room and he had these stack of index cards and he was memorizing shlokas. And when I joined the temple, he had, he had memorized at least 50 shlokas. So I said, oh, okay. So I copied Pushkar. And the first verse, let me show you the first verse I memorized. Everybody chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Because now I've forgotten it. Let's hear the ladies only. All right, men, show them. It's a tie. Got to play it safe sometimes. So he, he was the first verse I learned. Please repeat. Yo mam evam asam mudho Janati purushottamam Sasarva vid bhajati mam Sarva bhavena bharata Please repeat. Whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead without doubting is the knower of everything. So that's the first half. So you all, you all agreed that you have accepted Krishna as God. So the question is, do you still have any doubts? That's up to you. But if you know, if you understand, if you accept, Krishna, you are God. I have no doubts about that. Then Krishna says, you know everything. Meaning, you know everything that needs to be known. Not that you know how many angels fit on the head of a pin or what the stock market price. Not, no, that's not what he's referring about. It means you know everything required to go back home, back to Godhead. All right? Then the second line. Please repeat. He therefore engages in full devotional service to me. So this is exactly today's verse also. That unless you are convinced that Krishna is God the Supreme, then you won't surrender and you won't engage, as he says here, fully in devotional service. Like many people in all religions, all right, they go to temple, church, church or mosque, maybe one day a, a, a week. Or for some people, one day a year. It depends, right? Some people, they go... <coughs> Like my father, he was very religious. He went to his Catholic church every day. He was very, very religious. But some people, 
maybe once a week, once a month, or as I said, once a year. They got to show their face at least once a year. But when you are convinced that Krishna is God and you have no doubt, then you engage in devotional service fully every day as much as possible. So that's the same thing here. So the, the first thing is to get to that stage whereby you become convinced. And this also is helpful for those who see themselves as preachers. Preacher means somebody who wants to make others devotees. A yogi is only concerned with him or herself. But a true devotee wants to give this Krishna consciousness to others. So the first order of business is to somehow or other get the person convinced that Krishna is God. That's why I recommend Krishna book. Somebody reads Krishna book unless they're a complete idiot then they'll have to conclude yes, Krishna is God. For me, it took me six chapters. After reading Krishna killing Putana, close the book, okay, Krishna, you're God, I accept. So that Krishna book is good. It will convince someone. Or, but why do we read Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> we read Bhagavad Gita to convince ourselves